Hey everyone! Um, so some of you saw my live this morning where I mixed up the beginner bread recipe. I did my stretch and folds. I got it into my proofing containers. Now it's proofed um, and I'm ready to bake it. Um, so my oven is preheated. I've got two Dutch ovens in my oven um, and I've got a tray of water underneath my Dutch ovens. Let me just try and show you these. Hang on one sec. Um, so here in my oven, it's a little hard to see because of the light, but we've got two Dutch ovens and underneath it is a tray of water. So the reason I put the tray of water there is to keep the bottom of my bread from getting overcooked. Um, and um, one other thing that I do uh, with my Dutch ovens is I put crinkled up tin foil in the bottom of the Dutch oven and then I put my bread on the parchment paper on top of the tin foil inside the Dutch oven and then I've got the tray of water underneath and I'll leave that tray of water in the oven while the bread is cooking um, for everything but the last 10 minutes of baking. Um, so I used the method that I always say you should use, which is a clear straight sided container. As you can see, my bread is really nicely proofed. It's risen, it's bubbly, it's ready to go. I actually let this overproof just a little bit. Um, and the reason I did that is so that I can show you why pre-shaping is so important. So I'm just gonna turn my camera here and get this dough um, dumped out onto the counter and we'll, um, we'll go over pre-shaping. So pre-shaping is going to build tension in your dough um, and make it so that it starts to, you know, retain some of the strength that it needs in order to stay um, as a, um, in the shape of a loaf when you go to score it. So if you look at my dough, it's starting to dome, it's nice and bubbly. So we're just gonna get it out of this container. Now, usually for pre-shaping, you don't use any flour, no water. Um, you just use a bench scraper. Uh, I don't have a bench scraper, so I just use like a lettuce knife, um, anything with a nice straight dull side. So why is pre-shaping important? Oh, by the way, I wanna mention, I got a set of Bose earbuds for Christmas and these things are insane. Uh, my family's here, believe it or not, it's actually really loud in my house. The, um, the fan on my stove is going, but these things like tune out everything. I can't hear anybody around me and you guys can't hear all the background noise in my house. I honestly, best gift I've ever gotten. Okay, so we've got our dough and it's sitting on the counter. And if you look at it, it's very sticky and very, you know, non-uniform. And if you tried to work with this, if you tried to shape this, it would be really awful, really not fun. And I see this all the time. I made my dough, I mixed my dough, I did all the stretch and folds, I let it bulk proof on the counter, I paid attention to it, I tried to make sure it didn't overproof, but it's a sticky mess and I can't work with it. That's why pre-shaping is one of the essential steps. And here in this group at Sourdough for Beginners, group, my philosophy, and I think a lot of the people who've had some success, is that if you can just reduce the steps that you need to do to make your loaf to just the bare essential steps until you master those steps, then you can add the more advanced techniques afterwards. And that's going to give you much more success with your loaf. So while I'm pre-shaping, you'll notice a couple things. I'm touching it as little as I can with my hand. I am using my one hand to steer it and turn it, but I'm touching it as little as I can with my hand. I don't have any flour, I don't have any water. All I'm doing is starting at the top of the dough gently and pulling it around. And as I'm pulling it around, I'm letting it sort of stretch on itself and build some tension. So pre-shaping is that easy. But if you look at the dough, you can already see it looks a heck of a lot different than it did when I first dumped it out of the container. It's starting to have like a skin on it. I can now touch it and it doesn't stick as much. So what I suggest is after your dough has been proofed, bulk proofed on the counter in your straight sided containers, take it out, pre-shape it, let it sit for a few minutes and then do your final shaping before you bake. So. If you look at this dough now, it's holding together, 
It's nice and smooth. It's almost dry on the outside. It's got a skin on it. It's starting to learn that it needs to have some tension. So I'm just gonna move this one over. And now I'm going to appreciate the other one just so you can see it one more time. So same thing. Earlier today, after I was done my stretch and folds, I split my dough into two loaves. I put them into these clear straight-sided containers. I marked the height that they were at, and then I let them, them bulk proof today. I let these come to a full 100% rise and then a little bit more. And if you look at the dough inside the container, and it'll start to move if I try to show you too much, but it's actually starting to dome up on the sides. It's got bubbles in it. It's definitely fully proofed maybe even a little bit overproofed, but we can save an overproof loaf by using pre-shaping. So here we go. Just going to dump this out on the counter. And again, if you look, the difference between this dough and this dough is night and day. This one, you can touch it. It's not sticking. This one, if you touch it, super sticky. So we're just going to use our bench scraper, in my case, a knife. <laughs> to build some tension into this dough. And if you watch, you'll see as I work with it that at first it's pretty sticky, it keeps falling out of shape, but as we continue to do the pre-shaping process, it starts to create strength within itself. The gluten structure starts to kind of hold together. I'm not sure if you can see it well enough on this video, but we're starting to get like nice air bubbles just starting to look really good. Now, a lot of times when I do a pre-shape, I will, well, 100% of the time when I do a pre-shape, I've already started warming up my oven. Whether I'm baking with Dutch ovens or loaf pans or doing an open bake on a stone, um, I've preheated my oven before, long before I start to pre-shape. Um, a lot of times I don't start it that much sooner because I'll let this pre-shape joke pre-shaped dough sit for 30 minutes um, and rest. Um, but just for the sake of the live today, I'm actually just going to shape this right away. So if you look at this dough, it's not sticky. You can move it around. It's kind of got lots, lots of structure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shape this dough and get it ready to put into the Dutch oven. And then I'll show you putting it into the oven. Okay. So now we're ready to shape. So I'm just going to take a little bit of flour. I'm just using regular, um, all purpose flour. Usually I use rice flour, but I'm out today and I'm just going to sprinkle it on the counter in front of my dough. I'm also going to prepare my parchment paper. So I've got a piece of parchment paper ready to go. I'm going to use this as a sling to put the go right into uh, my Dutch oven. Um, so right now I'm just going to take a little bit of flour and sprinkle it on top of the parchment paper. So I floured my counter, floured my parchment paper. So let's shape this. We'll just turn this a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get underneath the front of my bread. So right now it's less sticky here. It's more sticky underneath. So I'm going to get underneath the front of my bread. I'm going to stretch it up and I'm going to lay it down on this floured surface. I'm going to shape it into a bit of a rectangle like this. And then I'm going to make a pamphlet. So I'm going to fold the top third down, the bottom third up. I'm going to tuck my ends here like this, tuck these ends. And then I'm just going to stretch and roll. So there we go. Now, I'm going to keep my hands well floured, and I'm just going to slide this dough around on the counter just a little bit. Now, at this point, if you wanted to do cold proofing, which I feel is an optional step, we would take this dough, we would flip it into a banneton, we would seal up the bottom that we've just made, and we would put it in the fridge to proof overnight. But in my case, I'm going to bake both of these right away. I've got the Dutch ovens ready to go. So I've shaped myself a nice sort of batard shaped loaf. So I'm just going to set this onto my parchment paper and I'll show you that in just a second. So again, with this bread, 
I'm just gonna flower the counter. Same thing, I'm gonna get underneath the edge of this one, lift it straight up, flip it over. And again, we're touching the sticky sides as little as possible. And usually I would have let this after pre-shaping sit for about 30 minutes. And in that time it would have spread out quite a bit. So I wouldn't necessarily have to stretch it quite as much as I am right now in order to get it ready to shape. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to do it just a little quicker. So again, make a pamphlet, fold the bottom third up, the top third down, whichever way you prefer, tuck our ends in, tuck our ends in here, and then stretch as we roll. So there we go. So I'm just going to move my first loaf, loaf over and flower up my parchment for my second loaf. So same thing. Just gonna give this a nice shape, drag it around on my counter. So I'm being gentle. I'm not degassing the bread. I'm not, um, I'm not trying to force any air out of it. I'm not trying to make it do anything it, want it, it doesn't wanna do. You know, sometimes I would probably take a little bit more care in doing my shaping, but in this case, I'm just showing that it's really meant to be super simple. So this one I've shaped into a boule shape. So I've got a batard and a boule. So now I've got two loaves ready to go. My boule's looking a little wonky, just fix it a bit. So now I'm just going to do what I would call a functional score. So it linked in this live is the is the link tree link that goes to all of the tutorials that we've created. We've got them on YouTube, Facebook. There's everything from the beginner bread recipe to the proofing success recipe, the pre-shaping and shaping recipe. They're all there. Um, the ebook focuses on what are the essentials? What's, what are the bare minimum processes that we need to do in order to get to a successful loaf? And what, what processes are great and, and have a purpose but aren't necessarily needed? Um, so pre-shaping, shaping, and a functional score are what I think are the essential processes. So beautiful, pretty scores. They look wonderful. Um, but they're not necessarily something that needs to happen for the bread, whereas a functional score needs to happen. So what's a functional score? It's usually about two thirds of the way across your bread. It's usually fairly close to perpendicular to the counter with your razor. So not quite perpendicular, but just slightly up. And all we're gonna do is we're going to slice the bread with our razor and we're going to get it to be about a half inch deep. So when I do mine, I usually go twice. So same thing here, I'm just gonna come, score around, and then I'll do it again a second time just to make sure I get a nice deep score. So that's it. My breads are ready to bake, my doughs are ready to bake. So I'm just gonna bring you guys over to the stove here and show you how we do this. So I've got super hot Dutch ovens ready to go. I'm just going to pull them out and shut my oven. And I'm going to pull the lids off. Make sure I don't touch these with my arm. So in order to try to keep the bottom of my bread from getting super hard, I like to just put a piece of crinkled up tin foil in the bottom of the Dutch oven. And like I said, there's also a tray of water on the bottom rack underneath my Dutch ovens. And I'll just take that out in the last 10 minutes to let them crisp up. So now I'm just going to use my parchment paper as a sling and take my bread and drop it right into the Dutch oven. Try to get my parchment off the edges. Same thing, take my bread, drop it right in, take my parchment off the edges. And then I'm just going to pop my lids on. And get these in the oven. Okay, so that's it. How long have we been at this? Hmm, I don't know, we're five or 10 minutes in. Um, pretty simple. 
but I think that those are essential processes. So pre-shape your dough. That makes it so that it shapes easier. It makes it so that it's less sticky and easier to work with. Um, put a functional score on your dough. Don't worry about the pretty scoring at first. Um, you can get to that once you've mastered the technique. Um, and um, if you would like a softer bottom to your bread, you can put a tray of water underneath your Dutch oven. So you can put crinkled up tin foil underneath your parchment. Um, baking temperatures are are sort of their their personal preference, but they're also what can your oven do and what does your oven do. So as you guys can probably see, I have a tiny stupid little apartment size oven. It's just not great, but I made it work anyway. The maximum temperature it goes to is 450. So what I do is I pop my Dutch ovens in at 450. I cook for 30 minutes and then after 30 minutes I pull them out. I pop the lids off and then I put them back in for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I pull the tray of water out and then I let them sit there for another 10 minutes or so. And in that last 10 minutes, I'm just watching it to make sure that it's <clears throat> the level of brown that I want it to be. Um, it's really common to preheat your oven to 500 degrees and then turn it down to 450 once your bread goes in. All of these things can contribute to the, <clears throat> to the final product of your bread. But the thing about excuse me, the thing about sourdough is that you really have to, um, it's a lot of trial and error to get to the right thing for yourself. So thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see the beginner bread recipe all the way from start to finish, it's one of the first links. Um, it, well, it is the first link in this live. If you click the link tree, it's one of the first links. If you're interested in learning about sourdough essential processes versus non-essential processes and how to incorporate them, the ebook does a really good job of covering that. Um, I linked these earbuds only because I know lots of you make videos. I know lots of you are listening to tutorials and watching them all the time. And oh my gosh, these things are crazy. I can't believe it. I'm used to my stove making so much noise in the background with the fan and I can't hear it at all. I've got them in immersion mode and my husband's behind the counter making silly faces and saying things and I can't hear him and neither can you. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, if you guys have any questions, as always, post them in the comments of this video. I will answer them and watch them and um, I really love this group. I really love doing these tutorials. So I hope you all had fun and we'll keep doing it as we go. Happy sourdough, everyone. See you later.